Welcome to the Studio Live Today podcast. On this week's episode, what are your desert island gear? What are the five pieces of kit that you would prioritize if you could have no other gear and you could just use that for your home recording? What is most important to you? Welcome to the folks who are watching this live on YouTube. If you would like to be one of them, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Go to studiolivetoday.com for that. If you would like to catch up on the audio version, studiolivetoday.com slash podcast will get you there. So the premise of this is, I thought about it, if I was starting out right now and I was going to be recording in the home studio or the mobile studio, whichever you prefer, what are the pieces of gear you'd use? And I thought I would give you my recommendations because I've been doing this for those that are new to the channel and new to Studio Live today. I've been recording in the home studio for coming up 10 years and I've used a lot of different gear during that time and I've found what works for me and what doesn't work so well. And it is all about finding the balance in my humble opinion. So your opinion may vary, but it's about working out what you need to do and what your budget is when it comes to gear. And you know what? There is such a thing as gas, gear acquisition syndrome. Have you heard of this one? This is where you think that all I need to do, see, to get the best quality recordings is to just go out and buy all the gear. Here's the problem with that. You need to know what to do with it. Doesn't matter. I always say that a great song in a million dollars uh, in a in a home studio is still better than a crappy song in a million dollar studio. So it doesn't matter the gear you have if you're not producing and creating quality music. So keep that in mind as we go through here. The other great thing about living in 2023 or more in the future, if you're listening to this one in the future, hello to you. I hope it's good in 2025. But the good thing about living in 2023 is that. We have really good quality home studio gear that's not going to cost a fortune. So if you are out there, you're using anything from, I'm going to miss some brands here, but Focusrite, Steinberg, M Audio, Prisonus, all of these brands create good quality gear and you can fit out a home studio for $200, $300, $400 and get some good quality stuff. So gone are the days where you have to spend thousands of dollars to get good quality recordings. If you're just starting out, you can pick up a kit for two, three, four hundred dollars, and it's going to do everything you need it to do. Now, I'll give the caveat there that don't go to the very low end. Don't go down to the low end of town because you do get what you pay for when you're only spent. So if you get an audio interface for 30 bucks, you're going to get about $30 worth of quality. But anything that you're paying 60 to to $100 or more for for a single or a two-channel interface is going to help you out. And by the way, if the words we're using, if what we're talking about mean nothing to you and you're really just starting out, we will give some explainers as we go along because some of this gear, you might not know exactly what a USB audio interface does. So we'll give you a little explainer as we go through here. I've got a cheat sheet for you folks. If you would like to know all of the gear that I use in the home studio, all you need to do is jump on over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. That's G. E A R. You're going to find my studio gear guy there. Now, that's got all of the links to all the gear that I use for my mobile recording, which I record on my iPhone and my iPad, and my desktop setup. So, I use a Mac these days, and I've got a desktop setup as well. So, all of the microphones, audio interfaces, mixers, right down to the mice and the keyboard and the webcam that I use when I'm doing live streaming. It is all there in a one-stop shop. Now, the links there are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, they will break off a small chunk and send it my way. So full disclosure on that one. But every piece of gear, every bit of kit on the Studio Gear Guide is stuff that I've used and stuff that I know works well in the home studio. And because I'm not exactly someone into really expensive high-end gear, it's not going to break the bank. It's not going to cost you a fortune. And you'll see that as we go through the gear, as we discuss things in this episode, you're going to see that a lot of this stuff, very affordable. You're going to be able to kit yourself out without breaking the bank. So let us dive in. Let us start talking about my five pieces of desert island gear. Now, Audio interface is the first thing that I've gone with here. Now, as I mentioned before, an audio interface is something that can allow you to connect up microphones, guitars, keyboards, any audio source to your computer 
or your mobile device. So in the case of me, I use an iPhone, I use an iPad, and I use a Mac. I did use a PC in the past, I've gone over to the dark side or the light side, depending on your perspective there. So when it comes to an audio interface, I have chosen one that is gonna work with all that stuff. And not surprisingly, I've reached for the IK Multimedia iRig. So the iRig Pro Duo, in my opinion, is the best balance of quality, convenience, and flexibility that you're going to get. So if I'm on that desert island, and let's not get too technical about that. Let's assume that my desert island's actually my home studio. It just sounds a bit better to be on a desert island. So we do have power, and I do have, the other assumption I'm making is I do have things like my guitar, because I could put, obviously I'd need my guitar if I was gonna record guitar-based music, but we're going to assume that this is just the studio setup. So first piece of kit, is the iRig Pro Duo. It's a two-channel audio and MIDI interface for iOS, Android, Mac, and PC. And that's the important part here is that if you are looking for a piece of kit that is gonna work with everything, so it's going to be able to plug directly into your iPhone, it's gonna plug directly into your iPad, it's gonna plug directly into your Mac or your PC without any adapters. And that's the thing, if I, when I was thinking about this, if I chose a Focusrite Scarlett or a Steinberg UR series audio interface, then that would require me to have some power, so a powered USB hub, and it would also require me to have an adapter, a lightning to USB 3 adapter for my iPhone, a USB-C adapter if I was using an iPad that had USB-C, and then a straight USB plug if I was using something on the Mac or the PC. So... I'm going with this as my first choice. And the good thing about the, the iRig Pro Duo is you've got two inputs. You've got separate gain controls on both of those inputs. So, and the, the inputs are a combo jack. So that means you can plug in either two quarter inch plugs. So if you're plugging in guitars or keyboards, stereo or mono sources, or you can plug in two microphones. So you can plug uh, two microphones for doing stereo recording, or you're recording two sources, or you can plug in a guitar and a microphone. So even if I was recording myself live playing a guitar and singing at the same time, I could do both of those things at the same time. Now, do you need this if you do, if you wanted to go with something like a Focusrite Scarlett or the M Audio or the PreSonus or the Steinberg? Yeah, there's heaps of other options. And a lot of those are listed over on the gear guide. So if you do want options, we got options. But in terms of something that can be used for a mobile setup and a desktop setup, I just find that IK Multimedia's iRigs are the way to go. Second thing that I have here is a pair of headphones, yes. So headphones are important for a couple of reasons, and I've chosen the Sennheiser HD280 Pro. Funnily enough, uh, I'm not aligned with any brand here, clearly, because I've chosen five bits of kit and five individual brands. So we're not focusing on one brand over another here. So the Sennheiser HD280 Pro closed back studio and live monitoring headphones. So why are headphones important for a home studio setup? Well, here's the thing. You need to be able to hear what you're recording. And when you're mixing and mastering your music, you need to be able to have headphones so that you can actually hear what you're mixing and mastering back. Equally important is if you're recording something with a microphone, you need to be able to isolate that sound. If you're just playing it back through your computer speakers, through monitor speakers, through your iPad speaker, guess what? You're gonna get that baked into your audio, aren't you? You're gonna get what we call mic bleed, meaning that it's gonna bleed in through that. So good set of headphones for your home studio do a couple of things. They help you hear what you're recording in good quality audio, and they help you monitor your own recording as you're recording. When you're tracking, what we call tracking, which is recording in sounds, having a good pair of closed back headphones. Now, what does closed back headphones actually mean? Well, it means that they go all the way around your ear. Open back headphones actually allow that sound to escape. And it's not really just about enclosing around your ear. They also have more sound coming out of them. Now that can be better for mixing and mastering to have an open back earphone, and it can sometimes be more comfortable. However, if you're recording as well as mixing and mastering, having a closed back headphone where none of that sound or none of that audio is going to escape, that is something that's going to really help you out. So that's what I would go with as my second piece of kit, the Sennheiser HD 280 Pro. Moving on, microphone. So the third piece of kit that I've chosen here is a microphone. Now, 
microphones. If you thought audio interfaces and headphones were a minefield because there's so many brands and so many choices and so many decisions to make, wait till you get to microphones. Now, I have chosen the Audio-Technica AT2020. It is a medium diaphragm cardioid condenser microphone. Now, without going into all the detail here, there are two main types of microphones you're going to use in the home studio. One is a dynamic microphone and one is a condenser microphone. A dynamic microphone doesn't require any power. You can plug it in and use it with anything and it doesn't require that phantom power that you would have on an audio interface. It means that it is going to be more flexible, but it doesn't pick up as much audio. Now, maybe you'd say, Actually, Johns, you should use a dynamic. If you're on a desert island, imagine the wind sound, the seagulls, the waves crashing. Again, the desert island thing is not real. <laughs> it is just our analogy, right? But the reason that I would go for this is it is the most flexible microphone and the most practical for different situations. So to, to tell you why that's the case, a dynamic microphone, as we just talked about, won't pick up a lot of noise. Good at rejecting background noises, but... If you've got a quiet sound, a quiet vocal, a finger style acoustic guitar, it's also not going to pick that up very well. Something like this, a large diaphragm or medium diaphragm condenser microphone that uses phantom power will be more sensitive, which means if you've got a quiet vocal, especially things like female vocals can be very difficult to pick up and you would not want to use a dynamic microphone a lot of the time with that, you can use a, a, a condenser microphone like this. The same with acoustic guitar. It will be good for an acoustic guitar. Even if you're micing up a guitar cabinet, just turn the input gain down. Again, because you've you've picked up, you've listened to John's, you've picked up your audio interface, your iRig Pro Duo, just turn down that input gain because it's easier. What you can't do is add gain, especially in a digital environment. If you turn things up too loud, you're going to generate noise. You're going to hit that noise floor. Whereas if you just turn things down, it's, it's okay. As long as you're picking up the sound, you can turn down the input gain and you can still get that through. So that's something that may be debated. Some folks may say that other options, the Shure SM57 or SM58, I also love the AKG D5. They're all dynamic microphones. It'll be horses for courses, won't it? It'll be different strokes for different folks. But in my experience, the reason that these microphones get such good ratings and are used by so many folks is that they just get the job done. They can do everything and they're like the jack of all trades when it comes to microphones. The next piece of kit that I have here, and this is where it starts to depend on the sort of music you create, but I think that a MIDI keyboard controller is a really, really important piece of kit. Even if, like me, you use your iPad or your iPhone, you've got your touch screen, you can enter things that way. You can obviously use the editing function to edit notes if you've got MIDI notes, if, you, if you're editing drum parts. But there's nothing quite like the tactile feedback of something that can enter your note information. So I've chosen my old faithful, the M Audio Keystation 49 Mark III. Uh, it is around $100 most of the time, $120. It's a good value option. You've got 49 keys. They do have touch sensitivity and aftertouch and all the good stuff. So it is all going to work for you and let you input not only keyboard parts, but remember, drum parts. If you're using virtual drums, a MIDI keyboard can really help you with your virtual drums. If you're playing a synth or you just need a pad sound, you can just play it in with a keyboard. It can help you get the timing right. It can help you with everything that you need to get done in the home studio. So the M Audio Keystation 49. And again, there's a heap of other controllers that you can choose from. Akai makes some great controllers. There's the Arturia Keystep. There's a heap of them. You can have the freedom to choose what you want to use, but that's my choice. That's my option is to go with the M Audio Keystation Mark III. Let's move on to the final piece of kit. Again, this is going to, your mileage may vary at this point in time. It gets, a little, it gets a little bit more fluid in terms of what you might want to choose. But for me, it is these ones. It's the powered monitor speakers. So as good as headphones are, sometimes you want to hear your music really pumping out there, yeah? You want to hear some good quality audio coming out. And since I bought these, I've been blown away. These are the PreSonus Eris E3.5. They're three and a half inch powered studio monitors. Now, I was recommended these by a bunch of people. And I, at the time, had some KRK Rockets 
that were about three or four times the price of these that I really liked. So I was like, do I need to try these? I bought them. I tried them. I now use them instead. The KRK Rockets are gathering dust. I use these ones instead of those because they're just so flexible. You can plug them into pretty much any source. You can plug them straight out of that iRig Pro Duo so you can have your monitoring coming out of there or you can plug them directly into a headphone jack if you happen to have a device that still has a headphone jack. So you can use it that way. They punch above their weight. They really have a lot of great features that you wouldn't expect in this price range. And by the way, normally about $100 US for these. They've got balanced and unbalanced inputs. They've got acoustic tuning. So you can actually tune it with your highs and your low frequencies. They've got a power switch and a volume control, which while it's not essential, it's really handy to just be able to flick your monitor speakers on and off when you need to. It makes it really easy. And they've got aux in and headphone jacks right on the front. So you can even have these plugged in and then have your headphones plugged into these. So you can be using both because sometimes you'll want to jump back and forth between your headphones and your monitor speakers. So I think that these are a really great buy. And that's as simple as it is. They're the five pieces of kit that I would choose for my Desert Island gear. We're going the iRig Pro Duo. We're going the Sennheiser HD280 Pro headphones, the Audio-Technica AT2020 large diaphragm condenser mic. You've got your M Audio key station and your Persona speakers. And this set is moderate. So this is around $600 worth of gear. And this is going to set you up. Now, do you need all of this? Do you need to rush out and buy all of this if you're setting up a home studio? No, you don't. Because really, you could get started with just the audio interface. Or there's other options. If you're not into this whole buying everything, what about a USB microphone? There's some great USB microphones that mean that you can get started for as little as like $60, $70. The Samson Meteor USB microphone is the one that I recommend. And it's usually like 60 bucks, And you can get some really good recordings with that without breaking the bank. So this is just my recommendations. Remember, these are my opinions, my experience. Take everything with a grain of salt when you're actually getting started with your home studio gear. Thank you to the folks who are here live on the show. We've had some great feedback from, from folks about the different stuff that they use. If you've got more recommendations for me, I highly suggest that you reach out and let me know. John Swanson says, uh, I use the Persona speakers. Very cool. Uh, yeah, they, they do work very well. And uh, the Thomas Christ says, uh, heard the same. Um, about them. I love my M Audio BX5, says the Falcro. Yes, uh, Fat Panda Cat says Persona's killed it with these monitors. Yeah, they, they really do punch above their weight for sure. Uh, comment here from SM Borthwick. I bought a secondhand Shaw Green Bullet very cheap a few months ago. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. Murder some harmonica parts, most likely. There you go. Good stuff. Uh, Thomas Christ would prefer being on a sta uh, be stranded on a desert island. There you go. Would be great, wouldn't it? Uh, Corona Wire says, I use my M Audio a lot. So the, the M Audio key station, which is very, very cool. I, I like it. Uh, a floating island that people are suggesting there. Absolutely. <laughs> floating in general sounds very lovely, doesn't it? Very good stuff. Um, uh, Ka Kahulu Rock says, I went nuts on the microphones. Way too many great choices. I need one or two of each type. Yeah, and look, you, you can definitely go uh, go down that path and, and spend a lot of money and a lot of time on the gear for your home studio. Uh, really good point here, a pop filter. Yeah. So th there's ways to avoid it to not see. But again, these are the little bits and pieces like a powered USB hub, pop filter, uh, some, some cable adapters, XLR cables. Yeah, so I know. It, it's always going to be hard. Whenever you say this is all the gear you need to use, it's not really going to be all the gear, is it? Uh, a dead cat. Now, it says Gazo or Vols. I'm hoping you're talking about a dead cat windshield to block out those, uh, those island winds. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, many vibes actually says, yeah, what's the, the screen thingy mabab but called, uh, again, that you put in front. Yeah, that's a pop filter or a pop shield is often called. Thomas Christ has those headphones. Very good. Uh, I like ear pillows. Yeah, that's the good thing about the Sennheiser headphones is that they have some really nice cushioniness on the side. Uh, Fat Panda Cat says, I do like AKG as a headphone brand. Yeah, look, we could talk for hours about different brands. Some folks prefer some brands over others, and that's totally cool. The one thing I'll say, I think you can buy all this gear online, 
But the one thing I'd say is things like headphones, it can actually pay as much as I'd love you to buy them using the affiliate links on my gear guide. Some things you really do need to go in and try on. So headphones are probably one thing that because we've all got different shaped ears, different shaped heads, different levels of comfort that we're looking for, the Sennheisers just work for my melon. Your melon may vary. So you may have a different sized head or you may have different comfort levels and need something a bit different. Uh, Brad Example says, I love my Pro Duo. I need a new one though. I have the first gen. It works perfectly every time. Yeah, don't forget you've got the, uh, the, the iRig Pro, the iRig Pro Duo, now the iRig Pro Quattro, which is the latest one. So there's a lot of great products from IK Multimedia. They're just one of the folks that make good stuff though. Again, don't get super dialed into having to get exactly what I say. I think anyone that says you must buy exactly this and everything else is bad is probably getting paid to say that. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gregor S. Sullivan says the first piece of kit would be the computing device. Yes, and uh, goes without saying, but your first piece of kit would be either a Mac, a PC, an iPhone, an iPad, something to actually record, something to actually do the recording, because uh, all this stuff is great. If you've got nothing to plug it into, you're not going to get far. Crow on a wire says the duo is what they use as well. It is really good. It is great to have uh, something that's portable. I love it. I've, I've got my little mobile recording kit case now, and I, uh, I throw the iRig gear in there because, again, you can just hook it up to everything. The fact that you have USB, USB-C, and Lightning in the box, it just makes things really easy, really good uh, for, for being able to connect up your gear, connect your things to your other things. Uh, folks, talking about Bayer Dynamic, Bayer Dynamic as well. Yeah, Tremor Bear, I think, said Bayer Dynamic make good headphones. We could continue on. This is going to be one of the shortest podcasts we've had in a while. We could continue on, but it really, I want to reinforce the fact that this stuff is simple. The gear that you use in the home studio, it shouldn't be a massive decision that you have to make. It should be pretty easy to work through this stuff and to realize what you need is not going to break the bank. It's not going to cost a fortune. Sit somewhere in that middle zone. Be like John's <laughs> and uh, get the gear that's going to work for you. And remember, if you buy through, if you buy secondhand gear or if you buy through other, other services and you don't like it, can be a little bit challenging to return. The reason that I recommend Amazon and Sweetwater, they're the two places, and Thoman for my friends in the in Europe, is that they have great return policies. They have good prices, they have a great range of gear, and they have really good return policies too. So don't be afraid to try things out. Don't just go buy everything and then return everything. That's not cool either, because obviously there's a cost involved in shipping things and returning things, and it's uh, you know, you're not going to do yourself any favours to the environment as well. But do, do try things and buy with confidence from those places, because I've had things. I've bought things from Amazon that just haven't worked out of the box, or they're just not right for me. And again, having someone with a good return policy means if you spend your hard-earned cash, then you can actually resurrect it if things don't work for you. So that is going to do it for this week's podcast. Yeah, simple stuff here. Don't need to overcomplicate it. Just get that. And remember, it is not about the gear. As I mentioned at the start of the show, you could have a million dollar song and use $500 worth of gear, still going to be a million dollar song. If your song isn't cutting the mustard, doesn't matter how many thousands or tens of thousands of dollars worth of gear you throw at it, it's still not going to cut the mustard. So thank you for being here. Don't forget studiolivetoday.com slash gear is the place to go. What's happening on Studio Live today? Well, this week, if you're listening to this podcast around about the time it's released, we've got our usual suspects. We're going to be doing a happy hour show, doing some Australian tunes. We're also going to be diving in to Your Music Live, playing your independent tunes. So if you want to submit a song for this week's Your Music Live, studiolivetoday.com slash YML. And we're topping all things off with some acoustic guitar recording. Yeah, we're going to jump into GarageBand and we're going to record some acoustic guitars. So if you want to keep up with everything going on around here, your one-stop shop is studiolivetoday.com. I hope to see you over there. As we say at the end of each and every show, please be kind to yourself, be kind to others and keep creating. And remember, gear does not make the music. Music makes the gear. Or something like that. I'll see you next time, folks. Bye for now.